Oh, hey, I'm Fucci. Welcome to Tiny Kitchen Big Taste. I was actually just reading through First Man here. I am so excited about this movie. And the book is great, too. There are tons of great stories in here. What is this? NASA's official recipe for moon pies. Oh, we should totally do that on Tiny Kitchen today. Graham crackers, check. Marshmallows, check. Chocolate, check. Moon dust, not check. Hmm, where are we going to get moon dust? Hey, Director Dwight, do you know where we can get moon dust? You want moon dust? I got your moon dust. Hang on to something. Tower cleared. Okay, we got a roll program. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. What you're gonna need is to go to the moon to get some moon dust. White chocolate, graham cracker crumbs, flour, brown sugar, marshmallow fluff, butter, an egg, vanilla extract, baking powder, baking soda, salt, cinnamon, vegetable oil, and a variety of edible space related toppings. You'll also need a baking sheet and silicone baking mat, a cooling rack, hand mixer, strainer, mixing bowls, double boiler, which is optional, spatula, piping bag, rolling pin, silicone spatula, plastic wrap, and a cookie cutter. I'm as excited about this moon pie recipe as I am about the first man movie. Now, if you're a regular Tiny Kitchen Big Taste viewer, you've probably seen the dad's award-winning chili recipe, but if not, just go ahead and click up here after you watch this video, because in that video you will learn that I am a huge space nerd. Mainly because my dad worked for NASA, he worked in the space program on the Gemini and Apollo missions, and actually, in the upcoming First Man movie, somebody is playing my dad. How cool is that? Speaking of First Man, here is a picture of my dad with the First Man, Neil Armstrong. Funny thing about this picture is that the fish that Neil is holding is actually the fish that my dad caught. But hey, you walk on the moon, you get to hold the big fish. Enough space chat though, let's get cooking. This is a great recipe, three easy steps. We're gonna make our cookies, fill our cookies, and then we will coat them in a great chocolate coating. To make our cookies, it all starts with our crushed graham crackers. Now I crush these in our tiny kitchen food processor, but if you don't have a food processor, no problem. Just throw them in a Ziploc bag and just keep pounding them until they are nice and fine. Throw that in our mixing bowl. Little trivia about graham crackers. They actually get their name from Sylvester Graham. He was a Presbyterian minister way back in the 1820s. He would bake this bread out of his own variety of flour that he created known as graham flour. To that we will add some white flour and then some baking powder, baking soda, and salt. And then we'll just give it a stir with our fork until it's thoroughly combined. Next we will cream together our butter and our brown sugar. We'll hit that with our mixer until it's nice and fluffy. You'll know it's ready because it's lighter in color. We're whipping in a lot of air. And next we will add an egg, vanilla extract, and our cinnamon. We'll hit it again with the mixer. So next we're gonna add a little bit of the flour. We'll add this in stages, hitting it with the mixer in between. And once it's at this consistency here, we're basically just gonna remove it, throw it on our plastic wrap, and then just spread it around with our fingers. We're trying to get it about a quarter inch thick. We're gonna cover it with the plastic wrap, and then I'm just gonna roll it with a rolling pin. Now once we have it to our desired thickness, I'm just gonna throw it on our plate, and we'll pop this in the fridge for just about 15 minutes. We'll uncover it after we take it out of the refrigerator and then we can just start stamping our cookies with our cookie cutter, keeping them as close together as possible. Now we'll do six in the first batch. Go ahead and peel them out and place it on our cookie sheet. Then I'm gonna pop these in a 350 degree oven for just about 10 minutes. Now while those are cooking, I'm gonna take some of this extra dough and we can just combine it, throw it back in the mix, cover it up and roll it out. And just keep doing that and then you'll get the most juice out of your dough. So we've taken our final batch out of the oven and they've all grown together. What's going on? Do not worry. We are gonna make them all the same consistent size by taking our cookie cutter and just cutting new cookies right inside. A little trick, we can just peel away the outer layer and then just 
carefully bring it over to our cooling rack. Now, once our cookies are thoroughly cool, I'm gonna place them top side down on our cutting board. I've transferred our marshmallow fluff into a pastry bag, and then we will just pipe just about a tablespoon or two of marshmallow fluff right in the center of the cookie. And then we will top them with our other cookies. You don't wanna press them down all the way, just enough to spread the marshmallow fluff. Then I'm gonna transfer this to our baking sheet and I will pop these in the freezer for just about 15 minutes. Now, while our stuffed cookies are chilling in the freezer, we can go ahead and make our dipping chocolate. To that, I am going to add some vegetable oil. We'll give that a mix. Now we can melt this in the microwave, but this is white chocolate, so it tends to be a little bit more temperamental. So I actually prefer to use a double boiler method. What? You don't have a double boiler? Well, neither do I. Do not worry. We're gonna use the same microwave safe dish and a small pot that we've got over medium low heat. Now you wanna make sure that the bottom of the bowl doesn't touch the water. You really just need just a touch of water in there. And then we'll just slowly stir it as it begins to melt. We'll just keep stirring it until it becomes nice and smooth. I'm gonna transfer it to a glass measuring cup or really anything with a spout. Then we will just start drizzling our chocolate right on top. Now I'm only putting it on the top side because white chocolate is very, very rich. I will spread these around. Now we can finish these off in a couple of ways. One way is to get some of these great space emblems. These are from the Apollo 11 patch. I got them printed at the grocery store. And you just go ahead and punch it out with this little punch machine and it makes a perfect edible patch that we can place right on top. So we'll do that on this one here. And I got a little astronaut that we can place right here in the middle. It's actually Buzz Aldrin on the surface of the moon and you can see Neil Armstrong in the visor. And finally, we've got a little NASA logo. We'll place that right on top here. And on these final ones, we've got our moon dust that I created by taking some of the graham cracker crumbs and mixing it with cocoa. I will pour it in our strainer here. Then we are just going to dust the top of these other cookies so that they look like the surface of the moon. We'll stick a flag right here in the center and then we'll plate it up. So check these out, the perfect size snack to sneak into the theater to see the first man movie or even make them for the upcoming 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing, July 2019. Hey, go get the recipe for these. They're available on our website. You can also check us out at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And when you try this recipe, please let us know about it in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. Until next time, I'm Fuchi reminding you that if I can make first man moon pies in a kitchen this tiny, you can make them in yours. We'll see you next time on Tiny Kitchen, Big Taste. What do you think, Neil? That's one tiny kitchen for man. One big taste for mankind.